Connor McDavid, did you see what he did? Oh my God. Didn't have a goal. Does not matter because he did something for the first time in his NHL career. And that's rare, right? Yes. He's done everything. Um, he had a six assist night. And the Edmonton Oilers put an eight spot up over the Detroit Red Wings. This game was tied going into the third period. What happened? Is, is this the best league in the world? Or like he makes it look like a kid's game. And I was watching that game and you're like, oh, third, you know, third period. This is a huge period. Detroit's kind of hung with them. And then it was like, see you later. Gone. I mean, he was unbelievable. He's been, we were talking about him, uh, you know, McKinnon, Kucherov, they're kind of the front runners for the heart. I mean, I don't know anymore. I think Ooh, he's going to catch him. Spicy. And I said like a week ago, I'm like, McKinnon all day, it's his to lose. And I mean, if he keeps this pace up right now and he's, He's working. He's working so hard is the difference right now, and he's getting under sticks. He's creating turnovers. He's creating so much on the def playing defense Correct. defense first, whereas it used to be him waiting for the offense a little bit at the start of the year. Now he's going to get that puck. And I mean, when you're a D man, I mean, he had those D in a blender mm -hmm. all night. Like Maurice Sider, all those guys were didn't know where he was. He's pickpocketing them, and just distributing and, and distributing, and and he's getting goals from the guys he's passing to, which is. It's a scary team right now. It's a scary team. You know what really impressed me about him? Seeing him ice level at All-Star Weekend, that's the most I've seen Connor McDavid be relaxed outside of in their dressing room setting. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it kind of coincided with, you know, some of his maturation as a young man. Uh, the fact that it's in Toronto, he's a Toronto area kid, all those things kind of playing into it. But, man, he couldn't have been better in terms of his accessibility. He was smiling. He did yes. interviews. I spoke to him numerous times, both on and off camera. Mm -hmm. That is the most effervescent I've seen him. And what that's a, a word. great what sign. What a word. That's a, you like that? <laughs> I love that word. And, and that's a great sign for the league and for the yes. sport because we know he can do this on the ice here, but with him opening up now to sell our great game and him feeling comfortable, to his credit, getting, getting yeah. more comfortable doing that, that is exactly what we need. Yeah. That's exactly what we need. It's not easy being that dominant and having that laser focus on your game. Yes. And then also being available to the public and available to the media. That's very difficult to do. And it's not, you know, we make it look easy. Yeah, we do. But <laughs> for these guys, it's hard because he's so dialed in every day, every practice, every game. He's so focused on the mission at hand, winning the cup. So for him to open up like that, and I was joking that he reimagined the the All-Star Weekend he did, and then, then wins it. So yeah. he had some he had a little skin in the game, which yeah. is nice. Connor but McDavid I, wins the Connor McDavid called competition. Called his shot. He wins the Connor McDavid <laughs> But that wasn't just against the men's leaguers and the adult no, wrestling. No, but against the big boys. That yeah. was against all the yeah. big dogs. He was so good. Yeah. And he was, he, right? was, he was bringing out more out of the guys as well because, yeah. you know, a lot of the guys go into the skills comp and all that, and it's yeah. kind of doo-doo-doo, and we saw one guy that was... One guy. One guy. You can't get the... <laughs> yeah, you can't you get the risk off that. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's just a testament to him and his his competitiveness. And I yeah. mean, you see it right now. He's he's pushing in the right direction and he's pulling everybody with him. And it's again, they are a scary team when they're going downhill. What yeah. is he? Twenty some goals at like low twenties right now in the goals department. And I think that's great. And we've talked about this yeah. before, where he doesn't need to put up fifty. He doesn't need to put up crazy numbers of goals because they need to win. They yeah. need to have. Everybody else contributing too, and so the fact that he didn't have a goal last night, but he had six assists, and they end up in a blowout win. These assists are highlight worthy. Did you see the one on Evander Kane's goal? My oh. goodness! So dirty. Get in the blender, the fella. Ow. Johnny Appleseed. Oh my the God. footwork is so dirty. I'll clean. take. I'll take 50 the of same those. Time. Just go to the net with your stick down. Oh my God. Unreal. A guy like this. Unreal. Sorry, Moritz. Yeah, that's St. Moritz on that one. St. Moritz, <laughs> yeah. Might have been skiing at St. Moritz, yeah, exactly. Switzerland there. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, for Connor McDavid, and, and I like your point, the fact that he's really elevated his commitment to the complete game, that says a lot to everybody in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. Because it's not only, hey, I'm going to get 150 points, because I can, and I've shown that I could do that. Been there, done that. Right? Said. But the only thing is, then come, you know, a little bit later in April, then we're picking our, our destination and what yacht we're going to be in and what we're going to have in the rum punch. That's a little different. You know what I mean? That's a little different than going deep in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And he, to his credit, has really ratcheted up his commitment, and that's gone a long way in their dressing room, and it's, it's gone right through the team. Mm -hmm. And here's the point, Jamie. You just made this point. I'll kick it to you. During their, their win streak that they had yeah. at 16 games, 10 different players scored a goal for them. 
So now yeah. you're starting to see that depth now. Yes. Ryan McLeod, mm -hmm. uh, Fogle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's – and their back end's been tighter. They're playing, uh, their back end is letting kind of Bush and Ekholm do their offensive – what they got to do offensively. And the bottom four, they're kind of just making sure they're defending. Nothing's getting by them, making sure they're creating turnovers for this forward group. Because when – when I was there for the cup of coffee that I was, the thing I noticed, I'm like, they're so dynamic offensively that as a D-man, all you really got to do is just create turnovers. Just yeah. have a tight gap. They're always going to get back and, and protect you. And once they get that puck on the transition, all you got to do is just, it's a two-foot pass. Mm -hmm. So Paul Coffey's done a great job. They're, you know, opening up these D-men. They're making little plays, and they're getting support from their forwards. And like you said, Top to bottom right now, it's 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 really good. Dylan Holloway's really taken a step forward since he's been back up from the minors, and I keep saying it, they're very scurry. They are. <laughs> they're scary. They are. I, I wouldn't I, want them in the first round right now. There's still a lot of games left, but I wouldn't want them right now, especially with uh, the skin man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's looking Buzzing nice. back yeah there. Skinny Pony looks good in there right now. <laughs> Skinny Pony. Skinny Pony's There's galloping. There's Skinny Pony. Uh, I yep. know we have to move on. We've got a lot to get to, but I do want to get a quick take on this because you mentioned Paul Coffey. And as a demon yourself, uh, what do you think of the fact that Coffey apparently decided that he's going to reorganize the dressing room and sit all the D-men together, which normally doesn't happen, right? You have, like, veterans and young guys kind of mixed throughout the dressing room. He decided, no, we're going to rearrange the seating assignments and we're going to put all of you together and kind of make a team within the team. Love that. Because that's just as important that you guys are locked in and connecting and competitive with each other as Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, whoever the offensive stars. Do you like that? Did you ever have a team where you sat with all D-men? Yeah, I never trusted a forward. What? I always wanted my D with me on my right and my left. And, you know, I had, I, I was, I, we did that in Arizona with the Coyotes. We had all the D kind of in a little group together. And, I mean, it's good. You, you build that chemistry. And you also, you want a competition in practice. Like, what I loved is when we had that, that inner competition within the team. And you're doing three-on-twos in practice, two-on-ones, and you're beating the forwards and you're celebrating. So then you're giving them a little bit more juice to attack and, and make sure that there's that, that fire, that edge in practice, you know, iron sharpens iron, as they say. Mm -hmm. So, and you bring that to the game, and you see that they're playing like a complete team, and the decor is playing together. They're yeah. playing as a unit, and with, with paired with Skinner and, and Calvin Picard back there, who's been phenomenal when he's come in. It, it's a good tandem. They're they're working really good. Now, can they do this in the playoffs when the pressure's ratcheted up and everything? We'll that's see. That's the question. But right now, that's a big question with the with the Oilers. They're they're checking all the boxes, but when that media gets on them. And the fans get on them if they lose game one or game two in the playoffs. And I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, but they're going to make the playoffs. And, you know, what's going to happen then? That's a question. So here's the thing, too. We just came off the Super Bowl, and everybody talks for great reason about the great Patrick Mahomes, the great uh, Kelsey brothers, of course, uh, Taylor Swift, the whole thing, which I love, by the way, the whole deal. I loved it. Sell the game. But here, exactly. But here's the other part that was maybe undervalued a little bit is the defense for the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm. And Steve Spagnuolo just signed an extension. Mm. So as we're talking about the National Hockey League and we're drawing some parallels, and the reason why I said that is from a defensive standpoint, if the Oilers want to go deep, in the playoffs, McDavid's not going to be getting six points a game. Dreisaitl can't get four points a game. So if you are now galvanizing that defensive core now and the goaltending pairs you just said, the tandem, and they're working uh, as a unit and they start to develop their identity yeah. and they become more competitive and Paul Coffey knows that when the Oilers are winning it it's not just because Gretz and Mess and those guys were scoring five points a game in the, mm -hmm. in the playoffs yeah it was yeah. on the strength of how they defended as well uh, and what their defense core did and what the great Grant Fear and built Ranford and Andy Moog did too yeah, yeah. yeah def right. defined roles right yeah as a team you need defined roles and you yeah. need to adhere to those roles and and that's how you create a winning culture and a and a, and a solid team chemistry top to bottom yeah.